Hello, YouTubers. So we're continuing Senma Saga Hellblade 2, the review, part four. Who would have thought there'd be a part four? And as per the discussion we had, um, as I get further in the review, I'm meant to lose some of my clothes. <laughs> so, yep, no jump high. And we, I don't know if we're going to go further. I didn't even shave, like... Yeah, I just showered, I yeah, oh, it's just natural. Like, you know, it's a YouTube, it's about the you part. So, well, we'll emphasize that. Make it all about, um, <laughs> uh, I'll stop. Hello. I want to apologize that the end of part three just cut out. That was just the camera crashed. Um, on me, unfortunately, I don't know if it's because I moved my hand too much or whatever, but see, there's a reason, nothing, um, too nefarious about it. If you thought there was something else going on, nothing's going on. <laughs> Everything's under control, <laughs> as long as the camera keeps working. Um, so, what can we say for part four? We've already gone for half an hour, there's more to say, of course. I used to love talking about video games. I kind of missed YouTube when I was a kid because I loved thinking about games and talking about them, doing my own little reviews in my head. Um, so another thing I absolutely love in Senwa, which only this game has ever done. Um, can you guess what it is? I'll tell you. It is... Um, oh, sorry, I got a not notification. It is that uh, Senua gets very emotional and you can see it like she's like uh, she really feels things a lot and when as she talks or when her voices talk they're very angsty and very emotional and I've never actually seen that I've never seen a very emotional person even when they're like in the midst of an action scene and their life is in danger they seem to be cool as a cucumber and when I did my writing, which I mentioned, I always wanted my characters to be very emotional. I thought that was a very human element to bring that out and not just get the words in. Like other professional writers, I feel time and again, they're very good. They are definitely very good, but they just merely get the writing in and the emotion doesn't seem to be in it at all like and to me i always thought there's something wrong with me like <laughs> um am i why do i feel emotions <laughs> almost and but in senwa it's done the way i would expect it to be done and so well better late than never 2024 and we finally get an emotional woman so i'm quite happy to see that so that's one thing i love about it um uh, what else can we say? So, and the game like steadily progresses in chapter three. There's like a lot of rain and you're on like the seaside. It's quite nice. Then they have also these two giants as the bosses that you have to deal with. And I think of them as just a powerful figure. That's my take on it. So again, I kind of dismiss the actual story they have going. And instead, I think to myself, all right, the giant is huge. It's powerful. Kind of like the government. That's my take on like a politician. And the way they portray the giants, I'm like, yeah, that seems kind of accurate. Like if it's like, say, something again in your head that you're imagining a giant that is a little not part of not very committed to the real world not you know i so so that's where i find that interesting and um and then they have the cave in chapter 4 which is really good um quite creepy there's a different enemy in that one although the, again the gameplay mechanics will be the same um so they got a difficult um hidden base to find in that one uh, you know part of the achievement to find all the hidden trees and um i didn't really like the what the uh, aspect where you find all the symbols for one they actually reveal them straight away like it lights up on the screen and then you're like oh yeah this is 
like even before you've aligned it, you've got the symbols floating in the air. And so you already know you're in the right section. And then you just align it and then it all glows up. So it's very simple. Um, maybe it could have been a bit harder. Um, the game is very linear. And I, I'm i fine with that. Because again, I don't necessarily want a very open world to explore endlessly. Even though I love Zelda Breath of the Wild and um, Tears, or Tears, Tears of the Kingdom. Um, but it does also go on forever and, and I'm quite happy to just be given one direction. I don't, I don't have a problem with that. But I do dislike invisible walls. Sometimes you want to just walk off in one direction to get a great photo. I, seriously, I sometimes tried to do that. And then the game's like, nah, you're not going this way. Sorry, we just put in an invisible line and you're not going through it. That's a bit unfortunate. Um... The they did also have like this these woods in the night which is meant to be creepy. I didn't actually find it particularly scary. I think that was a little bit of a missed opportunity there to make that work a bit more. But again, I love how it goes into the inner monologue. And so for me it's it really is a ten out of ten experience. <clears throat> I do like that Microsoft would brave into something a little bit more niche. And they pulled it off, I think, phenomenally well. And so in in that respect, I think a congratulations is in order for the team and for Microsoft for doing it. Um, the, the visuals, again, are amazing. I use Dol Dolby Vision for it, which um, while that setting, like the TV needs to support it, I don't think it's very good for cartoon visuals. Um, but I do love it for something that's a bit harder, harder graphics and going for that look. So, all right, seven minutes. Thank you so much. All right, I didn't cut off this time. Thank you. I think we're done with the review. I don't know what else to say, really. Um, all right, maybe we'll do Netflix next time. Okay, thank you.